What you have just heard is the ringtone on the Motorola Droid. Today, we're going to take a look at the software tour of the Motorola Droid. We're going to go through Google Navigator. We're going to take a look at some of the features and programs that come on the Droid and Android 2.0. And then we're going to take a look at Verizon Wireless's visual voicemail application. So let's go ahead and unlock the device by swiping it over and take a look at the software. So now that we have the home screen unlocked, let's go ahead and take a software tour of the Droid and Android 2.0. At the top, you have the notifications bar, which is carried over from the original Android 1.0. And if you swipe downwards, you get to see in detail what notifications you have waiting for you on the system. So we're not going to actually take a look at those notifications right now, so let's go ahead and swipe up. The feature we're going to take a look at right now is the Maps application. Google Maps now comes with a navigation feature which gives you turn-by-turn -turn driving spoken directions. So let's go ahead and take a look at that by launching Maps. When you launch Maps, it will give you your uh, starting point right here. And if you want to navigate, just hit on the menu button and it pulls up your, um, your other options. So you can get directions by hitting the directions. However, you do have Google Voice Search on this device. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that and search for where we want to go and navigate to using Google Voice Search. When we go to the home screen, you have the Google search option here, which you can type in the location or the type of business that you want to go to, or you can hit the microphone button on the screen and speak into the device and tell it what you want to look for. So let's go ahead and look for Starbucks by using the voice search feature. Starbucks. It will show results in a web-like interface here, and you can scroll through and find the most relevant location and navigate to it from there. The starting point or the point of origin is actually set as your GPS direct or your GPS position right now. So let's go ahead and go there. You do have to drive for a distance before it will give you your next turn directions. But in our experience with using Google Maps for nav with navigation, uh, the program works quite well. It was accurate and gave loud spoken directions. Speaking of navigation, when you're in your car, when you dock this phone, it will actually go into a car mode. However, if you want to force it into car mode, there is an application called Car Home, which will bring the device into a car navigation kind of UI so that you have quick access to the important applications when you're driving so that you're not fumbling around on your phone. The UI works both in portrait and landscape. Let's go back home and let's take a look at some of the other applications that come bundled with Android 2.0. The first one we're going to take a look at is calendar. There are two calendar options, the main calendar and the second one is a corporate calendar. The corporate calendar syncs with your Exchange ActiveSync email account so you have uh, access to your Exchange calendar. But in calendar it doesn't look like a lot has changed. You do have a little bit of a nicer UI here and everything is zippy on the fast processor. Let's go back home, swipe up for all of our applications. You do have access to setting up your email and your corporate exchange email as well. We're going to go into phone next. With phone and the contacts tab, you can actually sync your contacts with several cloud-based servers, including Exchange Active Sync, your Google Gmail or Google Contacts application, and Facebook. So when you're tapping on a contact icon or a picture caller ID there, you can see the number of different ways you can communicate with that person. You can call that person, you can go to their contact card, you can go and send them a text message, an email, or navigate to them via Google Maps, or you can go to their Facebook page. Let's go back home by tapping on the home button at the bottom.
Verizon didn't bundle a lot of their applications with this device. You can purchase music through the Amazon MP3 store, which allows you to purchase tracks over the air. You can download applications through Google Marketplace, which has undergone a bit of a change since we saw it on 1.0. You don't have the carousel that you do on the Sprint Hero. So let's go ahead and take a look at Marketplace on the Hero. So on the Hero, you have the carousel at the top. Here you don't. What Verizon did include is their visual voicemail program so that you can actually listen to voicemails. Voicemails are downloaded using Verizon Wireless's eVDO connection or over Wi-Fi. You can play the voicemail by tapping the play button and you can toggle if you want the voicemail played via the speaker on the phone so it's on loud or if you just want to hear it through the earpiece you can go ahead and do so as well. So let's go ahead and play this voicemail. This is John Wynn for PocketNow.com and I am testing the visual voicemail system for Verizon Wireless on the Android 2.0 Motorola Droid. Thank you. And once you're done, if you don't want to save it, you can go ahead and delete the voicemail which brings up a confirmation. And we're going to go back home. The browser actually is a little bit faster now. We're going to go ahead and go to the Pocket Now page, which you will see as being faster than it is on the HTC Hero. So we're going to open it from our bookmarks. Let's There is still no multi-touch in the browser. You do have to use the Google's um, zoom in and zoom out icon on the bottom once the page is loaded. You'll see the zoom options right here. But pages do load a lot quicker than they do on 1.5 on the HTC Hero or even on the Sprint Samsung Moment. So this has been a quick tour of some of the new software and some of the new updates that come along with uh, the Motorola Droid and Google Android 2.0. Thanks for watching.